verse 10, if you can get it on the screen for us, please. Acts chapter 4, verse 10. <clears throat> Salah is going to come and read that for us, please, from the screen. Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of, of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Thank you. Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Shall he bow our heads down? Heavenly Father, we come to you. You are the same yesterday and today and forever. You are the Alpha and you are the Omega. You are the God who never changes. Nation changes, geography changes, Climate changes, financial system changes, the economy changes, nation changes, people changes, but one of your attributes is you never change. You are the same yesterday and today and forever. Your love never changes, your grace never changes, your power ne never changes, and you are the same yesterday and today and forever. Lord, you were the healer and you were the creator, you are the healer, and you will be the healer and you will be the restorer. We give you all the glory and honor to you. Holy Spirit, minister to our hearts that our hearts may be open. Our spirit may be enlightened. Our body will receive what we need to receive from you. And walk in the goodness and the purpose for which we are created. God, healing is about serving you and serving the purpose for which we are created. We give you all the glory to you. God's people shouted amen. amen. <coughs> I just want to, without much jargon, leave it on the screen for me, please, the word. I want to bring some basic understanding about healing to us. Healing, you use the word healing. You often have healing meetings, healing crusades. And I was with very great men of, you know, crusades. I was with... Uh, Benihin on the stage and healing was breaking out everywhere. Extraordinary in Manchester, you might know. I was with other people like Maurice Serlo on those meetings, you know, how God was really healing. Often we use the word healing. I want to tell you a word, an alternative word to healing for us to understand is called restoration. Restoration means is something what is created or something which is manufactured to serve your purpose. You go and buy a car. Paul has got a nice car. We sometimes buy a car and set up a, you see, that car is to take Paul from his home to the workplace and to bring him back. The car is there to bring him to the church and to bring him back to his house and to go and spend some time with his family and friends. A car is created for the purpose that he bought and the car is used, I'm using Paul, but this is, a, you, this is the same with everybody who has got a car. The same way human beings are created for a purpose of God. Whether you can't call it the worst people in, in different parts of the world, we hear about the bad news, we hear about how bad they are. Yes, that is true. But that is not the purpose they were created. It was not for the purpose they came into this world to be what they are. Oh, that person I don't want to know. But you see, I wanted to bring you something. God, is, God created these people all around the world. Oh, they are, they are from Africa, they are from India, they are from Middle East, they are from all over. The Bible says God so loved the world that he given his only son Jesus that whoever believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. The purpose for which you and I are created, we go back to the same Adam and Eve 
Adam and Eve were created to rule and reign and have dominion. Please tell you never have dominion. Dominion goes with authority and power and strength. He was a creator and he created, he given all the authority to, to his people. See, God created Adam and Eve to be a partner with him and to serve his purpose. Now the lost man, you know, Jesus came to this world, let me go into healing and briefly touch and deal with what the Holy Spirit is doing so still we can finish on time. The purpose for which it is created, we come to a time in our history, everything, if you go to Bolton, the other side, there is a big junkyard, all the cars are kept there. Millions and millions of cars in junkyard that are going through crushes, but we have come to a place we do not know much about restoration. Everything is a throwaway society. We just throw away the things. Why well, is no good? That battery is no good. That, you see, I, mean, I, I come from a background, I'm glad I, I come from the background, so I know much about restoration. Even the battery, car battery is thrown away because it is no good. We need to take it to the place and throw it away. I come from a place when I was a small boy, when I was a young man, the battery is cut out again and put new cells into the place and seal back again, put all the acid and everything everything there, the battery is as good as ever back again. For one third of the cost, the, back, the battery serves the car for another one year very well. How many of you know that? <laughs> but even in that places, they don't do it anymore. They throw the battery away, buy a new battery and put it on. Because we come to a place we never know about restoration. And cars are being thrown away. You know what is happening? All the products are stripped into pieces. Platinum in cars, in you know, expensive cars, there are platinums there. There are various object materials there. Everything is stripped away. And people come from China, because I deal with quite a lot of import and export and various things. People come from China, and just to buy these from the junkyards of the people where they process, and they go back and manufacture something else again, they send back to England. What a bad news that is. <laughs> it is true. How many of you know it is true? <laughs> the very product we thrown away, they take back to China and manufacture, then they export, then we look on the internet and book that one and buy them because it is cheaper. You know the song? When Nabil was leading us in the worship, he sang the song. You do not know how much it costs. Once I found once again, I look upon the cross where you died. You know, I'm humbled. See, God is into, we don't restore, we throw things away again by those things. Again, we throw away because it's good. We come to a point of throw away. We, see, God was into a, he was a creator. When the man fallen away from God, God wants to restore. A healing, a healing is about you are created for a purpose. I say to people, I pray for people. I tell them, why would God heal you? Because God wants to put you back in the same purpose for which you were called and chosen. How many of you know the five virgins and the five foolish virgin and five wise virgin story? How many of you read in the Bible? Put up your hand, please. See, you know what he's talking about? What he's talking about this virgin? Five foolish virgin, five, five wise virgin. See, when we are born again, God restored us completely. This I'm talking about healing to Christians, but is the healing is available to everybody on this earth. Even the vilest criminal on this earth, even the people we don't want to know about it, God can save them if they're prepared to be restored. Shall we shout hallelujah? This is demonstrated. God restored Peter. Peter was not created for the purpose of, I do not know Jesus. When Jesus rose up from the dead, Jesus restored. Thomas, you know, today we are sitting here, St. Thomas Church, St. Thomas Center, this is. Because you know why? Jesus, the, the Jesus who rose again from the dead, he first thing, you know, he restored and reinstated the place that you and I should be. He started with his own disciple, Peter, I wanted to build. So I'm going to restore you. When you are strong, you will restore many people. You know, Thomas, you put your finger into my, into my nail, into the nail piece to my hand. And he said, my Lord, my God, he was not prepared to put his finger in there. But he believed that Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, 
That's why we are standing in this place, St. Thomas' Center, years later on. I'm standing here. God is into restoration. The healing concept is, often we do the mistakes. Ten virgins are ready to go when we are born again. We God completely restored us back to the people who we should be. See, God created you for a purpose, not to live a life and live in sin and get drunk and, you know, eat whatever you wanted, do whatever you wanted. See, Christian, after you're born again, many people live the same lifestyle. See, you, human beings are not created to the way they are living in that. Human be beings were created on this earth to worship the living God and to be with him and to be friendly with him. You know, and he, he wanted to spend time with you. He wanted to interact with you. That's why God created you in his own image. God create, did not create, uh, you know, a, a donkey or a cow in his own image. He created human being, whether you come from Africa or America or England, God created you in his own very image. Shall we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. See, why healing is happening because God is in the business of restoring you to put back into the same purpose you were intended for. You know, I love restoring things. I restored minibuses. I restored, you know, using you know, cars and vehicles. I love restoration. I restored computers, chipped off those things. You know, those days it was very, very important. Nowadays it is not even again throw away society. It is very cheaper to throw away and get a new one rather than restoring. In my early days in the computer market was coming up, you know, I used to restore computers, throw those parts and this parts away, put new in it so it can still serve the purpose more effectively. See, God, you know, when, we, when, we, when, we, when, when God called us, saved us, he restored us to a place where we should be. What is the purpose for us to live a life that is holy and righteous and to uphold these laws, uphold this word, and to live according to the purpose God called us to? See, what happened? We are restored. When God brings in that healing into our life, it's not only salvation, we often talked about it, from the same cross of Calvary. The salvation come. If I ask any church, no matter which church they belong to, and I ask them, you know, where does the salvation come from? Through what Jesus done at the cross of Calvary. But I tell you, healing comes from the same place. <clears throat> the same finished work of the cross bring the healing. No matter what it is, God can. Because in a way, God wants to put back into the purpose for which you are called. Why often trouble comes in our life? You know, there is various reasons for sickness come into our life. I tell you, the main reason the sickness come into the life of people is this. Because we are not created for the purpose we are dealing with. Or our mind we are occupied with. Our spirit we allow it to be turned, you know, deal with. When we do those things, what happens? Satan has got a right. You know, you, you paid your blood. Jesus, you paid your blood. And this fellow, or this woman, is doing this stuff in her life. This is what her thought pattern is. This is what her mind is. This is what her behavior is. She behaving as though she is religious. She go to church, but her thought pattern is this. In her mind, there is no clarity. In her mind, there is no holiness. In her mind, there is no righteousness. In her mind, she is not honoring you. God put his head down. That is not the purpose for which I restored him. That is not the purpose for which I called him. You know, you become the five foolish virgin. You are called and saved by God. I'm speaking to the church now. Hear me out. Because what happened when we don't listen to very carefully what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in our life, what the Word of God is saying in our life, we are distracted by the attraction of this world. We are attracted by the things of this world. Instead of becoming we sharper, Listening to the voice of the Lord God Mighty who called you because he, he called you as a bride. He called you as a beautiful one. He called you as, as a beautiful and an honorable person. When we disobey from God and go away from him, you know what happened? The enemy has got the right to bring forth those things in our life. He go to the courtroom of heaven and ask the permission, can I go? And God, you know, he's, I paid the price for him. I paid the price and restored him. But this is the mindset with which she has gone. See, still it is not too late. People can repent and come back to God. God, help me. And he's a merciful God. Please shout, he's a merciful God. 
He is willing to restore you back again. This is what the healing is about. You are created for a purpose. When you don't serve the purpose, there are so many things come into our life. Because you and I are not created to live in sin. Shall we shout hallelujah? You are not there to watch sin. Shall we shout hallelujah? <laughs> Living in the kingdom, don't wait for one day I'll go to heaven, there I am going to be all right. But live in the kingdom of heaven, it's a seamless transfer. You are not created, church, hear me out, even if you are listening on the internet, I tell you, you are not created to live in sin. Are disobedient to God, or you are called, chosen to live in the purpose of God. When you become, even it applies to the non-Christians. Only they don't know the knowledge. When they have the knowledge, you know, there'll be major breakthrough will come to the city. The days are coming closer, my friend. Church will see marvelous miracles. Church will see amazing miracles. Acts chapter, you know, I read from the Acts chapter 4. Here is Jesus died and gone. The church beginning to emerge. And there were miracles and wonders started happening left, right, in the center. Peter was walking by and, and the people were healed. That's what Jesus said. Those who believe in me would do greater things. And the people started getting healed. Jesus came to restore not only your hope, not only your finances, not only, you know, many people preach about many things, actually. I tell you, I tell you, God wanted to restore you as a whole person. Please tell you as a whole person. When we understand who we are, why we are called to, when we are in the purpose of God, many things are your birthright. Many things are your birthright. I come into the purpose for which God called me. God has not called you to do like a job lock, living somewhere and earning some money and doing something for your children and to, and to die. God has called you for a purpose. When you live in the purpose of God, what happened? God, why Pastor Sam say come to church? For you to live in the purpose of God for which you created. God came to meet every day Adam and Eve. He didn't create them, go and get lost what he wanted to do. He came in the cool of the day, every day came to have fellowship with him. Every day to spend time with him. See what is your problem, my friend. Oh, the snake come and trouble me every night. Oh, really? Jesus could have, God could have dealt with at the snake properly. See, that's why Jesus came there for. Why you have to come to church? Why you have to come to fellowship? Pastor Sam, this is the trouble. This is what is happening. You know, because we stand, okay, right, we will deal with the issue very quickly because God is in the business of restoring. God delivered people out of the demonic powers and darkness. When demons come into our life, it brings everything else with it. You know, many people, Jesus, Jesus chased away the demon out of their life and healing came into their life completely. Satan comes to rob and steal and kill and destroy what God restored. You know, we are so proud we restored this building. What for? We restored this To serve the purpose for which this building was built. Shall we shout hallelujah? I asked Steve to come and pray for the apostles. You know why? When we reopened this building after four years of so much work went on, so many people made so much sacrifice, their finances, their savings, and their time, and so many things. What it is restored it for? When the church was built in that to proclaim the name of Jesus and the gospel and his power. So when the apostle dedicated this place, they dedicated in this place here. Father God, this place will be a place there will be many salvation, many healing, and many miracles, many baptisms. Some people will be brought from sickness into life and strength. People will be brought from sin into life of holiness and righteousness. That is the place this place is dedicated for. You know, I was rejoicing as the, as, the, as, the, as the relative of Yefi and the family and the people of God come and dancing before God and to praise and worship Him. The place is not intended for your sinful life. The, the place is intended for salvation of many. You know, often I put leaflet and make, you know, a leaflet and worship and so many things, even after, even we put on. It's not a joke, I tell you. It is not easy. But we wanted to say, this is the purpose you are called. You may not know why you are called. Oh, I want to have a nice life and a family and a children. It's okay. They're all bonuses to you. They are not the main cause you are created. That's what the Bible says. Seek the kingdom of God. All these things will be added unto you. They're all addition to you. 
They're all everything that God wanted to give to you. See, they are not the main reason you are created for. He said, oh, I wanted that blessing and this blessing. Okay, they're, they're all okay. The kingdom of heaven is not short of anything there. When you, when you look at the Bible, how God created people, how God created even the, you know, when, when God was really adorning, decorating the Lucifer, how much, you know, jasper and gold and that and this and that. There is no shortage in heaven. Shall we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. But God wanted you to be the person partnering with him. God is not looking for servants. God is looking for partners who can be with him. Who can be, he created you as much as he is. He created in the very image of him. You know, a couple of years ago, I think now years very, went very fast. You know, I don't mind Brian saying this one. You don't mind, do you, Brian? Brian was in the hospital. And I left him, I started crying. And God was telling, I'm going to restore him out of that place. You know, it's a big operation he went through, and God completely healed him. He's sitting down at the back. You know, I've seen the operation, how serious operation it is. You see, our God is into restoration. Our purpose, our, our life is to serve the living God. Shall we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. See, you see, often you have to think, God created Christians, how they can live a life absolutely focused on. What is suitable for, it may not be even some of the activity, may not be even sinful, what is suitable for the job lock is not suitable for you. You are created for a different purpose. Okay, I'm going to watch this cinema. I, I look at it, nothing wrong with that, the person going to cinema. What is your priority? What is your priority in your life? You can't do everything. There's nothing wrong with you going to a, a suitable film and enjoying your life. I am called for a special purpose. My partnering with God is more important. My, my life is completely called and hidden with Christ. When Paul is talking about my life is hidden in Christ. When it is hidden in Christ, you know, you are a very, very key person to God. I'm talking to the church, not to the heathens, but this is applicable to everybody. You know, when I'm listening to many, many people and they come up with so many problems, I said to you, God will heal you. What are you going to do with the rest of the life? You know, in their mind, they want to carry on the way they were. <sighs> Healing is the restoration. Restoration. See, your body is supposed to function. In, see, when we, when we don't get, when we don't allow God to restore our life, we think somebody is going to restore. In one of the language, I don't know which language it is, hospital is called Krankenhaus. Is it, anybody know? Germany, is it? <laughs> it's called Krankenhaus. <laughs> I love that word, always stayed with me, Krankenhaus. See, it's good to have hospital. I pray for hospital. We go and prophesy and pray for the doctors and nurses, and it's very, very important. See, God can heal through the hospital and the doctors and nurses, but the main purpose of God is to, for you to live in full health and healing and strength. Even if you, you lived in sin and difficulty, you got into your salvation, I see people got saved, they, everything beginning to turn around, healing come into their body. Jesus died and gone to heaven, gone to be with the heavenly father, but healing was breaking out in the early church. Many, many miracles, many, many healing, because God has continued the work all alongside. I have seen so many miracles in my life. But you see, the reason is, I don't want to build my ministry as a healing minister. You know, people do that, and that is fine, absolutely fine to them. Because it is, it is a sideline purpose. It is yours. It is like any other coat and a suit and a dress you live in there. That belongs to you. It is like a car you have. It is like everything you have. But when your heart and mind is focused on God and the purpose of God, you are not entertaining sin to come into your soul or to your body or to your mind. Watch this carefully. Many people, Christians, don't sin. But all the time they sin with their mind, I tell you. It's the greatest danger. This is why I tell you. This is what Jesus challenged his people. Matthew chapter 5, verse 26. You know, you people have committed adultery. It's not when he jumped into the bed. In your heart you commit adultery. Your religion will teach you something else. Jesus was challenging all the disciples, all the people, Pharisees and Sadducees. By your every thought, you defile the purpose and plan of God. 
that God created in your, in your life. You are not created for the purpose of living the way you wanted to do. Satan comes to put a seed. Your mind is a good, good, good ground. And Satan come and sow the seed of disbelief, sin, and so many things. Before you get so many trouble in your life, your fertile mind, your fertile field is sown with seeds of the enemy. Just to put your head, hand on your, all of you please, put your head, hand on your head and say, I refuse the, I refuse the seed of Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wanted to bring in it's the healing, you see, see, religion comes here. Oh, she, sinned. she should be crucified. She should be stoned to death. But actually, when you look at things with your lustful eyes, you have committed adultery. It's not when you, when you do the things the world may do, the world may say. Because God's standard is so high, he created you for righteousness and to be like him. See, today healing is God wanted to heal us, restore us to, to the purpose for which we are called. See, when, when we go through this trouble, even as Christian, we get sickness and trouble. What we do, we have to have four principles in our life. Okay, God, this is what has happened. You acknowledge where you are. Be courageous. Please tell your neighbor, be courageous. How do we, if people say that you need to have faith. How can God raise up a dead person? The dead person cannot have faith. Hello? <laughs> And you are dealing with something else here. God raised up. So people say, well, you don't have enough faith. I tell you, first of all, I seen God healing non-Christians. But you know what I wanted them to have? I wanted them to have courage first. Courage is very, very important. Please tell your neighbor, don't get discouraged. And don't feel contempt. Oh, you got some sickness, so you can feel contempt. What I wanted is a simple four process. I hope quickly I can get you through. God wants you to have courage. I'll back up with the word of God. The first, first thing for getting healed by God, <laughs> I tell you, you can say people can condemn you because condemnation comes from the devil. But this is a very simple step for you to have a courage. The courage takes you to, next step you need to have is, because when sickness comes, when the trouble comes, what you lose is your courage is gone. One, one doctor said something, nurse said something, and the report said something. They will come to knock you off the courage. I preached a couple of weeks the message when King Jehoshaphat marched. He was alarmed. He was not discouraged. He was but slightly alarmed. The Bible says he was alarmed. Please tell your neighbor alarmed. And the Bible says then he marched to the enemy. Then he marched with his limited resources to the enemy. See, you can't march. See, these people dance here, our friends who come here, and come to the ground here. To march to the devil to tell you, we got the victory. Shall we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. It's powerful. I, I do not know what the guy, but I'm watching, I'm watching in the spirit. Because what happened when you march to the devil and resist the devil, he will flee from you. See, how do we resist the devil? Unless you have a courage in your life, See, people in England, is a very good thing. People don't cry very much. They, if you cry, it is wrong. I tell you, in one sense, it is meaningful. Because you are really bold and brave. Sometimes you are brave and bold for the wrong thing. But the right thing, you are alarmed. You don't lose the courage. Take courage. Take heart. Faith comes later on. <laughs> faith is a very religious word. Oh, you don't have the faith, that's why you're not healed. Faith don't come in the first instance. You have to pull up your courage. Okay, here is the trouble. I am going to face this trouble. Even if you are a Christian, they go broken completely, gone. It affects you, it brings you down when it's a, when it's a death and the trouble. <sighs> Cancer. And people get frightened. But see, the name word stands for Christ. The big C is Christ. Not the cancer. It's Christ. 
Christ alone. When you know it's not set up, yes, what the doctor said, what the nurses said, everything is big. But the sea, the big sea is Christ who died and rose again. He is powerful. His power will be never diminished, never, never come down. It will always be on the increase from glory to glory. The world will see the glory of the coming king. You are on the right side. Please tell anybody you are on the right side. The courage is very, very important to the process of healing. Courage is very, very important for you to come to the next step. The next step I want to give you is persistence. It's not I have a courage. Don't have the Dutch courage. You know, people say, oh, drink, I'll have two drinks. And then they started speaking which things, otherwise they would not speak. That is called Dutch courage. Not, 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 not disrespect, disrespect to harm. That's what we call in England Dutch courage. Is that right, Paul? <laughs> That is not the courage I'm talking about. The courage take you to persistence. You know, there is a powerful, powerful parable in the Bible. Jesus told, your friend came from a long distance, but the, but the friend didn't have anything to offer to, the, offer to the guest. So he went to his neighbor and knocked on the door in the middle of the night or whatever it is. He kept on knocking and knocking. Because he, he didn't stop knocking the door, the friend got up and given him whatever he wanted to give to him. You read in the Bible later on. <laughs> what is important is, it's not only a courage, not only a Dutch courage or whatever the courage, you have to have a persistence. I am not going to give up. Like a persistent widow said, I am not going to go where Jesus said, not for you. You know, it is for the Israel. But she said, she said, even the dogs will eat what is fallen from the table. She was persisting. The judge did the righteousness to her, bring the justice upon her. Persistent is very, very important. Often people give up something. Oh, I don't like it. This is too much for me, too difficult for you. Actually, your faith is not there. Faith is not coming because your persistence has failed. It's not Christianity. It's not for the weak-hearted. God I want to pluck up my courage. You come to the church. You've never been to the church. Your friend called you to come to the church. You come to the church. You have some courage. The first thing God wanted to give you is courage. And that, see, that is part of you. See, God, nobody has to create the courage. The courage comes within people. You are in a difficult situation. The courage comes. Work on your courage. That didn't have to come from anywhere. And the courage take you to get rid of every discouragement. Whatever the problem you've been facing, whatever the difficulty you've been going through, God, I am going to have the courage to overcome. See, this is how people in the world also get healed when I talk about these things, the courage. The courage leads you to persistence. Persistence is, no matter what it is, you go to Job, Job says, even if he kill me, I will see him. Still, I will see him. The persistence take you to a belief system. A belief system in your life because you are asking again and again and again. It seems like no answer from the other side. But even if he kill me, I am going to trust in him. Shall we shout hallelujah? That take you to persistence. It's not said, of, oh, I don't like the church. I can't be there. I'm just going and hiding in a corner. You know, you will never have faith. I'm not talking about the faith. You will never have faith. When Jesus said, I'm going to forgive seven times, seven days, how many times he should forgive? My brother, keep on mithering me and troubling me. And can you tell me how many times I should forgive? Jesus said, seven times, seven days. <laughs> seven times, seven days. You know, in your forgiveness, you should be persistent. In your giving, you should be persistent. <coughs> in your sharing the gospel, you should be persistent. In your coming to the church, don't hide away. You are persistent. How do you walk into a, how we can allow God to restore you completely? I am persistent, even though I don't see, I wanted more prayer in my life. I wanted, I wanted, you see, when, when Ify was in the hospital, I, every day morning, or more or less every day morning, I was trying to send a message to her, Ify, and because I'm just praying for you. And, you know, Ify always responded to my text. Even in her hospital condition, she said, thank you, pastor, just one word. And I keep sending the text message to her. I'm sorry, I'm standing in the place. You know why? you hanging on there. God, I trust in you. See, let me tell you one example. Totally, yes, a woman came to Jesus. Totally, yes, she had issue of blood. 
You see, I tell you, just to imagine our concept here. Totally, yes, she had issue of blood. She would be anemic. She would be completely weak. Her blood count would be, could be even lower. And she lost all the money. The Bible says she given all the money to the doctors wanting to be getting healed. What she had was not, what she had was courage. Please tell your neighbor courage. What she had was not money. What she had was not, you know, doctor around her because all the doctors have abandoned her. It's not what she had. <clears throat> what she had was not money because money is all gone. Her health is gone. She must be anemic. But what she had was courage. That courage and persistence, no matter who they were pushing, because all the men were following Jesus, all the women were following Jesus, strong people were following Jesus, but I am going to have persistence, and she walked and walked and walked until I am going to touch the hem of the garment. I am not going to let anything put me down. My weakness is not going to put me down. My health is not going to put me down. I am going to touch the hem of the garment. Here I am talking about courage, because she was not allowed to be discouraged. You and I imagine for 12 years of sickness, we would be, oh, I don't want to go to this healing meeting. I don't want to give this leaflet to anybody. Pastor Sam can say about healing. Pastor Sam can talk about healing. But I've been 12 years, I've been in sickness. I know what is meant by sickness. Don't possess the sickness. Please tell your neighbor, don't possess the sickness. The sickness is not belonging to you. How to reject the sickness? Because this woman said, if I go and touch, what she had was the courage. Courage is the opposite to discouragement. Courage comes in there because she has not seen the healing, but she had one thing. Christ the Messiah, and he is the healer, and he can heal me. And she pulled the courage. I am going to run, I am going to run, until you touch the hem of the garment. First important thing is courage. Second important thing is persistent. Oh, Jesus is climbing to a mountain. Often Jesus went to the mountain. It's a, for a weak person, a weak woman with all the 12 years of issue of blood in her life. I can't climb that mountain. Today, my friend, even if you are listening on the internet today, I want to tell you, or any media you are listening to, I tell you, don't say I can't climb to the mountain. Don't look at your enemy condition. Be persistent. That woman said Jesus often climbed to the tall places where he preached from there to the people. So she said, I am going to climb to the mountain. I am going to touch the hem of his garment. I am going to receive the healing. Faith is a process. People often say you don't have the faith. Faith don't come unless you have the courage, unless you have the persistence in your life. God poverty and struggle and things. God, I am going to do this one completely. I am going to follow your word. I am going to trust in your word. Your blessing is on the way. Delay is not denial. Delay, what you see many people's life is, you know, they lose the persistence. They lose the consistency. They lose the thing. And then they believe the faith is gone through the window. Faith won't be sticking to you. Faith will be gone. Courage against discouragement and a boldness in Christ. My Redeemer is living. Even if I die, I will see. Shadrach, Meshach, Bendigo, seen. You know what they did? Even if he put it to me, even the king thrown to me into the fire, even if he die, even if he didn't rescue, we are not going to worship the world. We are not going to worship the enemy. We are not going to worship the statue because the Lord God, my Redeemer, is living. Shall we shout hallelujah? The fourth person stepping into the place, when they thrown into the fire, they saw the fourth person standing there. The Lord God Almighty stepped into the fire. No matter whatever the fire is, God stepped into the place because there is a boldness, there is a courage. They were not afraid of the fire. They were not afraid of death, but they were prepared to be in the place. Fourth person stepped into the place to restore them. Shall we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Kingdom, kingdom life is about restoration. Restoration. Salvation is about restoration. You and I were not created enough. When Jesus met this man at the temple, he said the previous week or something, he healed him. And he was in the temple doing the same thing. And he'll be looking at everywhere. He has got no idea what God is doing in his life. Jesus looked at him, man, sin no more. He was healed last week. He was in the church. Jesus turned around and told him, sin no more. Maybe worst thing will happen to you. 
Because God created him, God restored him to serve his purpose and to be living in his kingdom as a witness for God. This is why healing is restoration to the purpose for which you are called. That's why Jesus said to this man, go, be careful not to sin anymore. See, wages of sin is death. How many of you read that in the Bible? Wages of sin is death. But all, see, all, please don't be condemned anybody because all sickness is not that I'm talking to the mainstream, what God created you for a purpose. But that purpose, when we come into the purpose, healing is yours. God, my life, I'm going to serve you. No matter what it is, God, I'm going to, me and my family, we are going to serve God. No matter what it is, I'm consistent. No matter, you see, everybody one day has to die. Everybody, but don't die before the will of God is complete in your life. Before God used, one day a vehicle would be gone. Or they will be in a museum somewhere. So as our life would be. But don't go before it is your time. They will come to rob and steal and kill. God wants you to live and for the glory of him to uphold his rules and laws, preach about his law, teach about his law, restore people. God called you to restore others. When God restored, Peter said, I will restore you. When you are strong, you restore many others. Two things I want to tell you, and before I finish whatever God is going to do the rest of the time here. God said one thing. The Bible says, when many people came, he healed them all. Please tell your neighbor all. See, you, you can have a contamination thing. Oh, I'm not good enough. That's why God is not healing me. Many people say, this is my so-and-so and I have to live with this one. That is for the glory of God. Some false doctrine go around there. But I tell you, God, the Bible says, many people came to Jesus. He healed them all. I'll give you the reference later on if you want. He healed them all. So there's nothing, he did instead of a select few people I will heal, those who came to him, he completely restored them. Completely. The Bible says, he healed them all. And then another one I want to tell you, he healed all diseases. Please tell me about all diseases, sir. Because sometimes people think, oh, that is a big disease. This is a small disease. That is something very hard. Nothing is too hard for God. God healed them all. Jesus healed them all. Jesus healed all diseases. Because when he suffered the pain and the sorrow and the struggle at the cross of Calvary, there is a deliverance for you. You were released from the judgment the enemy was bringing on you because by his stripes I am healed. I am restored because he paid the price. When Abil was singing the song, you never know how much it cost him. He cost everything for you and I to be restored. People die. People want to commit suicide. People want to hide away from the gospel. This is the only gospel will liberate our nation and our town. Church, we need to understand. God wants to restore your health, your fortune. Every one of the blessings he wants to restore back to you. That is called kingdom. That is called church. That's why we should be careful with our bodies. Your body is not created for watching wrong things, bringing filth into your mind. Your mind is the fertile ground. See, people, before you sin, you know, devil, he is always sowing the word of discord, unbelief, pain, so many things <clears throat> he brings and sow into our fertile mind. See, many people allow the enemy to sow the seed into the mind. He sow only wickedness. He is not the righteous person. He is unrighteous. So what he brings in his seed is a seed of discord, is a seed of bitterness, is a seed of sin, is a seed of rebellion. That's why said Satan comes to rob and steal and kill and to destroy your health and healing. He start, he doesn't, he never start with your body first. He start with your mind first. That's why courage is important. Persistence is important. The result is you have a belief system. Even if he kill me, I will trust in him. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God. Shall we stand before the living God? I got five minutes. I have not touched my message at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God. He's risen. He's risen. Say, don't allow. They will tell you, did he tell you that one? See, when he came to Garden of 
Garden of Eden, what he did? Did the God tell you not to eat the fruit? Yes, he did. He didn't say, don't eat the fruit, I eat the fruit. He put a doubt in your mind. The best mind, here is a father, here is a God who created you. He put a seed in the mind to doubt what God has done. Courage is gone. Okay, doubt, he saw the seed. My fertile mind, your, your, your brain is the fertile mind. See, it's completely called, called by God and chosen by God. Your faith don't come from here suddenly. You have to allow your mind to be well focused on God. Renounce everything there. Sin come and get hold of your life. You watch the wrong thing, wrong news. You can't filter out news. You can't filter out magazine. You can't filter out. You don't have the ability. The enemy get into your mind. See, devil will tell you, you see, this, this again, Christians live there. You have to work for that. You have to do this one. You have to do this. Again, bring Jesus done everything at the cross of Calvary. Jesus, by his stripes, we are healed. God is wanting to restore our town. Why we wanted to do the 14,000 leaflet? I'm looking at people. Can you do this, please? Can you take some leaflet to give to somebody, please? Some people struggle. Some people joyfully run. Early in the morning, people get up in the morning to go and run. You know why? Because God can restore many people's life. There is nothing impossible. The vilest person on this earth, Jesus can restore if the church is ready to reach out correctly. You know, yesterday, without going into detail, I was going through a very difficult hospital. And I just praying outside. Even before I go into the hospital, I'm praying outside, declaring what the Lord God wanted to do in that place. You know, it brings salvation to people. Our hospitals are so beautiful, well built in England. You know, you don't have that facility. They are built to restore people to God. That's why in every hospital there is a chapel. There is a prayer chapel there where people can grow. We take our leaflet to put it there in such a way people's life can be restored. The healing meeting, it costs everything because God is in the business of restoring people's life. See, I'm not just into building a church and putting all the chairs and people sitting here. I wanted the town for Jesus. Shall we shout hallelujah? I wanted the nation for God. God wanted to restore our nation. This term, these churches are built for proclamation of gospel and bring healing and restoration to the people in England. You know, we are standing in the place this, this morning. God, whatever that went on in my head. You know, I'm not going to specifically pray for people. I'm going to pray after the service if you wanted for anything in prayer. But I wanted all of you, close your eyes please. All of you, close your eyes. Sir. Put your hair, hand on your forehead. All of you, I tell you. God wanted to bring courage to you. And this morning, I'm not going to give an altar call to come to you to the front. But keep your eyes closed. Don't look at somebody. You will miss what God is doing. Because your mind is, you don't allow the enemy to corrupt your mind. Your mind is the precious commodity you have got. The rest of the body, it is the, it is the control center. The brain is your control center. See, where you get the courage, not in your, not in your shoes, not in your, in your trouser you are wearing, in your mind, you are well focused. Devil do the same thing, trying to capture your mind and sow discord, unbelief, you know, sow discouragement and so many things. And I am declaring healing over every one of you. Every one of you. So your mind, the Holy Spirit, rest in your mind. You know, when you speak in tongues, when we want the Holy Spirit to work in our life, because we are allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our life, we speak in tongues and praise and worship God, because healing comes to your mind. Your mouth is loosened. Your heart is loosened. A stronghold exists in your mind. Can I receive that one? We become pathetic Christians. Because if the mind, you block it for the enemy, God, when you block your mind, your eyes is blocked. Your ears are blocked. Your, your mouth is blocked. So you are not speaking nonsense. You are not hearing nonsense. You are not seeing nonsense. Because all happened in your mind Deception of the enemy come to your mind. God, I am rejecting it. Any, every one of them, any one of them, even unforgiveness, even bitterness, even anything, enemy trying to bring in temptation, everything come to your mind. God, I am guarding my mind completely. God is wanting to do a restoration complete in your life, in your marriage, in your children, in your family, in your generation. Father, I am declaring a healing to everyone in this room, whether they are having sickness in the body, or any situation, Father God, 
I pray as they in faith, they put the head on their forehead. Father, I pray their mind will be totally protected. The enemy will not be able to put a single seed in the mind of negativity or anything, Father God. They will walk in full health and healing and prosperity and blessing, Father God. If devil sown them in the mind, they cannot win anything. They will live in poverty. This morning with authority you have given me. Father, I call it a liar. He is a liar from the very beginning. I am decreeing that will be completely removed from their life. Your children will go with tremendous joy, peace and freedom and strength in their life, Father God. I, I ask your forgiveness in their life. I ask your healing in their life. I ask your restoration in their life. Father God, I ask their, your prosperity in their life, Father God, and everything. Your children will lack nothing. They will walk with joy and freedom. They will possess whatever <clears throat> they could not possess otherwise. We lift them up and their wider family. Father, I pray, enrich them, strengthen them. We give you all the glory. God's people shouted, Amen. amen. Shall we give a clap to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords? See, please hang around. There is coffee and tea and some refreshment there, some food there. And talk to the visitors here and encourage them and share with them what God is really doing and listen to what they have to God to say various things. Uh, spend a few minutes before you run away unless you have to run away. And God is with you. It's a wonderful day. Rejoice in him. Amen. If anybody particularly wanted prayer, you can come. I will pray for you.